Hi, this is Off to Battle, and today I'm doing a reaction video to Costin Gaming's The Future of Total War After Shadows of Change, and I'll just start playing it, and you'll see where I'm going with this very quickly. Everyone, Costin here with a discussion about Total War, Warhammer Free, Immortal Empires, and where we go from now. Where does the series go go from now? I think what has been proven without a shadow of a doubt with Shadows of Change is that Creative Assembly is at their best when they're under pressure from the community. Like Rome 2 comes out, it's a mess, Creative Assembly improves it. They improve with Attila. They make a vast improvement compared to previous games with the engine, with combat in general, with Warhammer 1, after a significant controversy. Now, Great Book of Grudges was surprised to see a hot fix today. I'm not because I did a video on the one last week. And they explicitly said they're going to take comments and advice over the long weekend and then start working on it on Tuesday. And today we have a hot fix. Why should we act surprised? Why should we act that it's we forced them to do it? They said they were going to do it. I mean, obviously, it's the bug reports from the community that helped create this hot fix because the hot fix is to fix stuff that's broken they need to know what's broken but why act surprised that is i think the essence of creative assembly and many companies as well it's not creative assembly in isolation but especially creative assembly i think uh, they've proven themselves to be reliable only when under pressure and they've proven themselves willing and quite able of getting of trying to get away with doing a lot of terrible things or really bad business practices and bad decisions. Look, here's the thing I'll say at up front. There's a lot of bad business practices in the world. I'm almost 46 now. I expect this. I don't like it, but I expect it. It's not a shock. It's not making me dismayed beyond a certain point. It's I'm reasonable in my expectations because i understand that there's a lot of corporate greed out there but there's also a lot of good stuff or else capitalism wouldn't work so it's a mix of the things that are good and the things that are bad and there's always going to be that mix nothing is ever going to be 100 percent good 100 percent evil it's always going to have shades of gray shades of light and dark when people like what they're doing and that is a problem, of course. Now, sure, we had the controversy of Realms of Chaos, we had some improvements, but we did also have developments in that respect. But then Immortal Empires comes out, we're all very happy when it originally came out. Sure, there was a lot of negativity as well, but yes, overall I'd say the perception of the community with Immortal Empires on launch was far more positive than negative. I think it's a sad state of affairs For a tiny when you have to time. take a really bad decision and a bad DLC for the company to put ch potentially change what they're doing. Because they've already released two hotfix patches and 4.1 might be coming out and it seems that they're trying to tackle the issues they've created instead of waiting for months and months to fix them. Yeah. So Creative Assembly is one of those companies that will try and get away, uh, will try and get away with having a smaller development team, raising prices if you let them. Am I to take this as CA is actually increasing the size of the development team because of the public pressure? Like I said, last week, that same team, that team that is responsible for the DLC's technical stuff, for the technical stuff for the game as it is today, they said they were going to do another hotfix this week. After the long weekend, they would work on it, and here we are. I'm not applauding my own efforts here. I had nothing to do with that. That's their work. And I know there's going to be a lot of people saying that uh, nobody should be praised for doing their jobs. So doing your job right is something everybody should be praised for. Maybe not loudly, maybe not gushing, but people deserve simple praise for getting their jobs done. These guys, their job is making Total War work better. Applaud them when they're doing it. Hope for more express a desire for more. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, where do I stand on this as a content creator? Because there's also been a lot of controversy with regards to content creators. Yes. That 
there's people on Reddit, certain YouTubers, people accusing uh, content creators, certain content creators about how they've covered things in Total War, how they've covered this DLC. Yes, and I have refused to respond to those videos, but I can't ignore it anymore because of costing. Well, that's a bit of a mixed bag. There are people. There's a blacklist, if you will, of on Reddit, for instance, of people who had pre-order links of Shadows of Change on so you know, third-party yeah. websites or something along those lines. Now, I I personally don't much care for such lists. Uh, I don't care for the idea that oh, just because someone had the discount link, that might they might get a referral link. They they're obviously just being shells. Or sell us yes. for creative assistance. He knows who he's quoting. He's not naming the name, and I'm not going to name a name either because everybody should know what's going on. But it's the guy who did a one hour, 30 minute plus reaction video to Milk and Cookies Total War. Assembly. Though at the same time, I could also agree with the sentiment that certain content creators are absolutely sellouts. Or they're unwilling to talk about negativity. One of the things I first noticed when I was content creator for World of Warcraft, and I was part of content creator communities, I talked to people, is there were some people that were willing to talk about issues, real issues with the games and all that. And then there were people who were, whose mentality was that they wanted to be as nice as possible, never really dive into deep. and. The sad reality is those people, it's not that Blizzard or Creative Assembly were rewarding these people or have been rewarding such people. It's more so people also reward those those kind of content creators. Like He's blaming you, by the way. That That's the problem. Like That's the fundamental aspect. It's easy to complain about YouTubers being sellouts, but when it makes you more money, guess what? That's Those are the kind of people that are going to rise to the top. And now he's blaming me. Not that I'm making money, I have been trying to fight towards that point, but I really haven't been. But, yeah, he means me. Not by name, just by the fact that I exist. Because you can't believe the number of people who just come to my videos and say, oh, I never want, I, I, you're too negative, or you're talking about the issues. That's if you've seen this guy's videos a lot, like me, because I get information from them, you understand that he is massively negative. And he's even made videos about, like, maybe sometimes I come off as too negative. No, it's because that, like, we get it after you've been to this point and the negative, the, the negative ego bloats to, like, here. So, we get it. He doesn't like Creative Assembly's business practices. I'm not saying I do. I don't. But... There should be balance in the force. Doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, I might add. It's like the objective facts about that don't matter. But there's a lot of people that just like, they don't want to hear any negativity. The problem with that is what exactly? Look, I'm going to say this like this. Positivity is a choice. You can choose to be positive. Not because that everything in the world is rosy, but because not necessarily everything can be solved by being negative and being essentially negative trying to get clicks and support for being negative. There's a place for that. There are people who do that for a living. I'm not sure I want to be among them, but there is a place for them. And up to this point, I haven't been judging because you have a right to your angle. You out there, Costin has a right to his angle. I have respected that anger. I have not disparaged it whatsoever. So you create a situation where a lot of content creators, especially those at top, the ones that, are get, that have the most access, the ones that get the most views, the ones that get the biggest streams, they're just, um, they're, they're just basically selling themselves out. Or this is where I really wish he'd lay this because uh, he can't be saying legend right because legends like i didn't even have to do anything i wasn't even around when this exploded you guys just did it all by yourselves he's got a right to feel that way i respect the anger and i should it's a responsibility for me to do so 
or they're saying things to that people want to hear can be negative can be positive depends on the context but in general when you're covering of game you I'll, I'll say it this way a lot of people want to hear negatively right now and i do understand you ultimately want to appeal to the people that are playing that game not the people who are frustrated and quit that can work in the short term but it's going to cause issues in the long term yes it means that you don't want to cover total war anymore until they fix this bleep and there are people out there doing that and who are assigning a scarlet letter of shame and that letter is s for sellout and they're applying that to people we know people i don't need to list off but the video was in response to milk and total uh, milk and cookies total War. even criticizing having tw in capital letters at the end of that channel so you never want to dive too deep into a controversy because of that regardless of how big or how small it is and that's how you get a bunch of these youtubers who never talk about the issues until something blows up and then they're forced to talk about it and then they're being very defensive this is where he really blames a guy like me who didn't talk about it until ca put out a community statement that essentially badmouthed the quality of their own dlc because i didn't have access i didn't have any tier of access because he'll talk about tiers in a minute but uh, i didn't have any tier of access because i'm too small i'm too new that's fine i have to fight for my place i want to fight for my place that's fine that's fair but to say that you don't want to say anything negative because essentially your well-being is on the line it's not just that it's anyway I'll just... with regards to it like one of the questions i would have and i've even asked some content creators some of the bigger ones right that have that uh, exclusive content creator access to total war because there's different I never had tiers. i'm part of the content creator program for total war but i'm not at the highest tier and i've, I've asked got no tier. some people and like how could you not see this coming like there's people that say that oh it's well, great that's not the point. What statement can I do about it? and that hurt us i'm like you had access to the dlc before that statement you're playing it and you didn't realize that people might end up getting pissed off over say the lack of key slave changes or kairos changes now i'll be fair and say that not every youtuber gives a damn about every single issue in the game some people care about vows some people care about lore some people care about units i care a lot about campaign mechanics i care a lot about camp i care a lot about campaign and mechanics too but and that's because i was a kairos player months ago I really enjoyed the challenge. I try to go after challenges without putting everything on legendary so that, like, unless you know exactly what you're doing, you're going to get hosed on legendary. So, because I don't know exactly what I'm doing until I do, I put it on a lower difficulty and I take challenging campaigns. That's fine. That's my choice. But Kairos had stuff that needed fixing, sure. Now, Kostin isn't happy that not enough was changed. That's fine. Why shouldn't you be talking about that? You should be. Campaign balance and flow and design, if you will. But yes, design. How could a content creator load up the DLC pre-release and not realize that they were going to get a thunderstorm heading their way the moment people realized that Great Assembly had basically changed nothing for Keith? And what were they going to do about it? You understand what an embargo is, right? An embargo means you can't talk about it. That's the thing with you're being given access, but you're being give, given access as a privilege. Because if it was a right, I would have had access. But didn't. They're being given that access under a set of rules. And people were, you know, they were outraged and hurt that CA seemed to be taking advantage of their not being able to talk about stuff. And that's exactly what happened, yes. What do you think they could have done about it? They don't have the legal right to break that embargo and not face any consequences. I mean, they'll face consequences. Information that is confidential as a business to, until a certain point of time, I mean, there's going to be consequences if you break embargoes. 
East level or, or Tsinch. How could they not realize that, or that even the Kafan changes are were relatively minor, and certainly not on relatively scale minor, that yeah. But any of these races deserve, especially Kairos and Kislev, because like what happened, because what ended up happening is not just like oh, Creative Assembly raised the price and they released a statement. No, Creative Assembly raised the price, released a statement that blew everything up. Yes. But also, people content creators started posting footage of the DLC, and people quickly realized how little. Creative Assembly done. How little things they had fixed. How little racial changes were in the DLC. Yeah, they weren't full rewards. And that's when things really blew up out of proportion. It was the combination. Why would it be out of proportion if the observations are accurate? The factors. And I just have to say it bluntly. If you as a content creator had access to the Shadows of Change DLC and you didn't realize that this was going to happen. And if you did realize it, could you have talked about it? No. Not without, you know, absolutely wrecking your relationship and, uh, which is maybe the point where the people say, oh, you're a shill. I was never in there to be kicked out, okay? But that's not the point. Then maybe you should reevaluate how the hell you're doing things because, uh, uh... We didn't make the game. We're not devs. I have talents in life, they do not include making video games. The YouTubers did not create this DLC. Because if you didn't, if you weren't pissed off yourself over what was in the DLC, if you think this was fine, that, that is a problem. And even if you thought it was okay and it was not going to be, it's not as big of an issue as other people believed. You had to realize, because as content creator, you have to be as content creator, you have to be in line. You have to understand what people are interested in, how people action. think. If you can't understand, like a lot of people are going to be pissed off because of the price increase, uh, combined with the lack of. Yes, yes, a lot of people are pissed off. Was it their fault? Was it the fault of the YouTubers that people were upset? Because the YouTubers did not turn their backs in CA on their early access, which was a privilege and not a right, and just burn every bridge. You can't just willy-nilly expose information that's supposed to be confidential. Changes, then what world are you living on? So that's one thing I want to mention. Now, with regards to Creative Assembly, here's what I think they need to do going forward. I'm just going to say this now. I respect your anger, but you do not have a right to mine. I will give my anger if I want to, and I will show it if I choose to. But you do not get it for granted. I am not part of a unit. I am not part of a guild. We are not a union. So don't draft me and then say, you've got to follow these rules or else I'll shoot you and leave you besides the road. We're not in that kind of army. With future DLCs. One, they need to update the game more frequently. I understand the mod situation. I understand can break mods. That's a cheap excuse. Like... As many issues as it's going to create for certain mods, especially the ones that are not updated as much, or the massive overhauls like SFO or Nagash, etc. Yeah, well, I've already seen a video of the guys doing that whole project, and though I haven't tried SFO myself, but uh, he gave very low marks to this DLC. Has every right to his opinion. Uh, is not a justification for Creative Assembly to sit on its ass for months and months on end, not fixing major issues that, by the way, are fixed in community mods. And mind you, a lot of the issues that the game has are not the kind of issues that would break the game, like under, uh, would break the game for mods. I understand that some mods would be affected. Okay. How does he know? I'll trust the SFO guy to say about stuff like that, but... This tech is how many years old now? Changing one little thing can break things way out of the picture. And you cannot anticipate everything. It's too big. It's too complicated. It's too intertwined. 
there's a lot of things you don't know it's going to break until it does. And then if it breaks in a place that you're not looking at, you need community reports. Because otherwise you won't even know that it's broken to fix it. But there are plenty of mods that I've had that haven't been updated in a long time and still work with all the major updates. Now, I'm not using major overhauls like SFO, but I do use things like a, that affect devotion. I use things that affect um, that, that affect public order. I use That's the warband upgrade system. There are there are things that Creative Assembly should fix that have been plaguing the game for a very long time that they haven't done. So you're so not hearing more frequent updates, by the way. far more frequent updates are required. And I think like it is the situation where you see Larian come out of Baldur's Gate 3 and you see the level of effort they put in that game, the love, care, dedication they put in that game. Not that they don't, but that game has been out for a lot longer than it was out officially. You see a company trying hard, pushing limits. You don't think they're trying hard. Look, however much you can talk about the level of investment and the size of the team, the team that is there is trying hard. That is clear from objective facts. And you see a company that the other developers are criticizing because, oh, it's an unrealistic perspective. I'm sorry, Larian is not. Maybe at this point you could consider it a AAA developer, but Larian has not been a AAA developer. It certainly doesn't have the resources of a company like Sega or Blizzard or anything like that. The point is, it could afford to have a game in uh, early access for that kind of time and work out a lot of bugs. And you know what happened when they released the rest of the game that there wasn't in early access? They had bugs. And then they fixed a whole lot of them, which I absolutely applaud them for. But... That was because they were able to put that out as early access and have the time to deal with all those things. And, well, we know that the Warhammer situation was a little bit different, but not every company has the luxury of putting your game out as early access like that and then having people buy it for real. They didn't know that it was going to catch on like this. They were hoping that it would. They were hoping in their wildest dreams that maybe something like this could happen. They were rewarded for a lot of effort. But not every company can afford to be like that because not everybody has a publisher who's cool with that. If we can't accept that as a standard or even better, yes, even higher than that, what the hell are we doing? Because it's easy to complain about games are becoming shittier, but if... People just continue defending shitty and shitty games that where less effort is put in. Not being negative at a particular point in time about a particular bunch of things is not defending it. There are neutrals out there. There was this old Ghostbusters cartoon thing, okay? That uh, there were these Indian spirits who... Uh, I think it was they came up like a, once every hundred years, and uh, they fought over one soul. A battle in a night for one soul. And the type of battle that uh, took place uh, was determined by the nature of uh, what the site was like uh, when they came by. So they ended up being in a baseball stadium. So they ended up having a baseball game for one soul. A member of the Ghostbusters team. And not the one they fought, either. And the Empire was like, nobody is neutral. So, guy on the sidelines who considered cheating in order to help uh, save what he thought was his friend's soul is really his own, but yeah, whatever. That's not an important detail. It's that interfering and cheating in the game was considered, you're taking the other side. You're not neutral. Nobody is. Uh, this is the, and this is like saying, like with the Athenians and the Spartans, nobody is neutral. There are neutrals out there. There are people who are not part of a crusade on either side. Not being on CA's back every moment of every video that you put out on YouTube is not defending CA. Because some of us are cynics who are not surprised that there are problems here. And therefore, we're not disappointed. We're just dismayed. We're sad. But... We're not out of the picture because you know what? We expect imperfections in life. 
we're not people who think that everything's going to be perfect and wonderful and the top of the industry for everything that happens, especially for something like this, this DLC, the poll price thing. I called it the blood price. Blood price, yeah. $25 for his throne. But the point is that I don't have to harp on it every single video. And that's what we're going to get, ultimately. And yes, Creator Assembly needs to do better. I've had that opinion for a very long time. And, you know, looking back, Warhammer 2, the cinematics of Warhammer 2, like the effort they put in that compared to Warhammer 3. And they should put in more effort in the story, in the, in, in, uh, in the map, in the objectives, in the races, in the campaigns than they have put so far. And that's not what we're getting. We're getting less effort because Creative Assembly wants to spend a lot of money on hyenas, for instance. And I will watch his, I will watch his video on hyenas. The big DLC that's going to come out, what Creative Assembly needs to do is major racial overhauls for all three races as part of that DLC. Like anything less, and it's just going to be a slap across the face. I'm not saying I expect it. I've had my doubts about it. Suffice to say, I'm not necessarily surprised about Shadow of the Change because expecting them to major uh, to do major reworks for free different races point, in one though. DLC is probably a or, uh, tall order. But what we got was far less. Now, some people that that want to defend Creative Assembly. No, we don't. Who out there wants to defend Creative Assembly? Who? 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 Is it you? Is it you? Who? This isn't about defending Creative Assembly. This is about, are we going to completely lose it over Creative Assembly not fulfilling our expectations? I'm not to blame for Creative Assembly. I don't work there. I don't take money from them. I'm not even in the Creator Program to any extent. He's more in the Creator Program than I am. It's not your fault, unless you work there and you're part of it. You know, unless you're an executive at CA, it's probably not your fault. There are things that aren't even within CA's control. Zangors, why are they those models? Because Big Daddy Games Workshop said so. There are limits when somebody else is the proper original rights holders and you've got it under license. You've got to take what you can get. And that is never going to be as much as you want. And I know that because I've translated professionally. I'm not the author of things that I translate. It doesn't work like that. So it's not defending CA to say that we expected trouble and we got it. That, yes, we wish that there were more, especially with, you know, race reworks. But it is not the fault of the content creators who've been burned by all this. Now, people may say, well, they should have done more. Well, they should have done, done this. They should have done that. They should have. Done. Yes, I understand that. I understand that's your view. That's your opinion. You've got a right to your opinion. You've got a right to your anger. But I've got a right to deploy mine where I choose to and when and how. That's my right. And it's not going to be the avalanche that it is from some people. And that's okay. Or it should be okay. We are going to be like, oh, they promised racial updates and our reworks. I'm like, every DLC for almost half a decade that they've released, with the exception of the race packs, has included at least one major racial rework. Not two or three, sure, I'll accept that. But at least one. And improvements across yeah, the board. Yeah, that's... You have to go it's back, a bit of a again, half a decade to see anything comparing to what they did with uh, Shadows with shadows of Change. That's how... Look, this is my judgment of it. Shadows of Change, the problem was not the content, it was the price. That's it. If people had expectations about the content that were delivered, which we couldn't because CA had embargoes going on, and that's on them, that's their choice, then we could have made a full judgment about the content. There is content here. There is content that a lot of people have enjoyed and liked. Not as much as people wanted, and not as much as people would say justify the price. But there is content here. The problem is the price. The price is also the main thing that has changed. And yeah, we 
I'd love to see major race rewards too, but I also am of the opinion Kairos wasn't as busted as people say, so I'm good with a whole bunch of little tweaks and making things just not as, you know, half broken. I'll put it that way. There are a lot of things that still needed to be worked out to make Kairos function well. But it's okay. Not all campaigns are supposed to be equal in difficulty, either. How bad is as a DLC? So they need to do better, especially because of the Empire. If they don't fix the Empire, if they don't improve the Empire and Dwarves, which are two of the most popular races in the game. I actually don't know that. I mean, they might be in tabletop. I don't know that they're popular here on YouTube. What do you think? Game. The controversy they're seeing right now is going to be nothing compared to what's going to happen in the future. You know, it's when nobody cares that it's dead. If people still care to argue about it and to be this negative, they still care. It's only when nobody cares anymore that you know it's really dead. Anyway, I am going to look at this video on hyenas because I am curious about that whole thing. How bad is it type thing, but that's the thing. I have watched this guy's content and the only problem I have here is that I'm essentially being dragged into the line of fire. I'm being placed as a human shield between him and CA. I don't want to be there. I'm not defending CA. There is no reason to. They made their choices, they should have to live by them, and if they earn less money as a consequence, then that's the market talking back. That's how it should be. There's no need for people to be silent, but there's also no need for people to be so negative that you're actually lending oxygen to these boycotts of YouTubers. And uh, the main thing is that negativity, negativity is a choice. And not being negative all the time is a choice too. And I would prefer to use wry humor. I prefer to be uh, obscenely upbeat about all sorts of uh, bloody things happening on the screen because if you're taking Warhammer too seriously, you're not doing it right. There's a lot of graveyard humor in this. So we want better. We need better. I hope we get better. I'm glad for the second hotfix. I think that's a positive sign and a sign that certain things are functioning and that the people who are actually in charge of fixing this stuff are working on fixing this stuff. And we've got to work with it. Or walk away. Some people are. That's their choice. But you don't have a right to other people's anger just because you're angry. It's not my job to dance just because you want to throw a party. So, I'm going to respect your anger, I'm going to sign off, and I'll sign off the way I always do. Take care, and have fun. Because fun is the heart of gaming. And if it stops being a game, if it stops being a game, what are we doing here? I don't want this to be a job or a social movement. I want this to be a game. Take care. Have fun.